What's up, YouTube? Let's create some Asterix style vocal glitch effects. So fans of Asterix probably know exactly what I'm talking about without the need of a reference. But for those who might not know what I'm talking about, the sound that we're recreating today is going to sound something like this. Awesome, let's get into it. So because this effect uses a vocal or speech sample, it can differ quite wildly in the results that you get, obviously depending on what samples you use and you know how you process them and all sorts of stuff like that. So you could use a single sample in multiple different uh, you know, setup and you could get multiple different results from that. Um, but that being said, this is also probably not gonna sound much like the original that was sent to me in the viewer request. Um, but that being said, I wanted to show you guys a couple of cool tricks anyway um, that I do use quite often for this type of effect. So I also do get asked quite a bit about, um, you know, the legality of using certain speeches and stuff like that. So a general rule of thumb that I use is I find stuff that's in the public domain, um, especially if I'm doing stuff like on YouTube and stuff like that, because... I don't want to get into legal battles and stuff like that. So I generally find stuff that's in the public domain. I'm not going to explain exactly what that is and all the sort of details about it, but I'm sure you can look it up. So I found this audio sample and I want to show you guys a couple of tricks uh, to get this type of glitchy effect. Through the deep caves of thought, I hear a voice that sings. So straight off the bat, I could tell that the audio sample was quite low in volume and there was a bit of like noise in the background and stuff. It was obviously quite an old recording. So I used Isotope Nectar 3 to kind of clean it up and bring up the level just to give it a little bit more gain so that we can apply these effects without losing too much sort of information. I'm not sure if that's the way I'm explaining it correctly, but I like to clean up the audio file specifically if I'm using speech because it kind of just makes it a little bit more audible in the end. But yeah, so I used Isotope Nectar 3. I'm going to post the link in the description of this video. I've done a full walkthrough of the plugin. You can check it out there. I'm not going to explain the plugin in this episode, but I'm just going to quickly use it to bring up the sort of clarity of the audio sample that I've just loaded up. Through the deep caves of thought, I hear a voice that sings. Cool. So because we only using Isotope Nectar to kind of clean up the sound, we don't really need it running in the background. So we can actually render this audio uh, sample out that we've just created. So I'm going to go ahead and render it quickly. Cool. So We've got this audio uh, sample nice and cleaned up. We've kind of boosted the clarity of the sound. So now what we're going to do is we want to look at like the placement of the sound. So what I want to do is I want to kind of make sure that each of the kind of syllables are placed rhythmically. Because this technique uses a, a re-trigger effect, we want to make sure that at the beginning of each of the sort of re-trigger beats that there's a little bit of sort of audio sample for that re-trigger to actually capture. Uh, we can go ahead and warp this audio file just to make sure that we've got syllables on each of our sort of uh, like beats or uh, so that the syllables are kind of like snapped to the grid, if that makes sense. Through the deep caves of thought, I hear a voice that sings. Through the deep caves of thought, I hear a voice that sings. Awesome. So let's just duplicate this so we can fill up the whole bar with uh, audio material. For this type of thing, I like to use the iWish plugin by Polyverse uh, in collaboration with Infected Mushroom. Reason being that there's quite a bit of audio that we're going to be chopping up and when using the scissor tool, it can take quite a while. So you can obviously use the scissor tool and load it up into a sampler if that's your thing, but we're going to use iWish for, for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and load it up onto this channel. So how iWish works is it requires a MIDI input. So whenever the note is re-triggered, it grabs another sort of audio sample to re-trigger. So let's go ahead and add that to the channel and add a MIDI track. And then when you play MIDI notes on a MIDI keyboard, you get this type of effect. So a really cool way of controlling the iWish plugin is through something like an arpeggiator or, I mean, Mucoda Hypercyclical Work, Audio Modern Riffer. Um, I've mentioned most of these in tutorials uh, previously. There's also another trick I'm going to mention a little bit later using a built-in Cubase effect, but I'm going to save that for just now. So the reason I like to use an arpeggiator for this kind of thing is, like I mentioned, uh, iWish kind of 
takes a audio snippet for every time the note is re-triggered. Arpeggiator and uh, sort of sequences is a very nice way of quickly being able to change that kind of like speed without having to like reprogram your entire MIDI clip or something like that, or quickly, you know, alter the rhythm or something like that without changing the entire MIDI clip. So let's go ahead and add a little MIDI clip here. So because this bass line is in G sharp, let's just pop a G sharp note in here. And we can actually span a couple of octaves of this note to sort of change the speed of retrigger that's happening within the iWish plugin. So with iWish, the sort of lower the octave that's being triggered, the kind of more audible the vocal choppy kind of effect will be. And the higher octave that you go, the more sort of like synthy the tone will turn into. Obviously it re-triggers so fast that it almost like, it basically creates a frequency. That's something to take into account. I mean, if you are wanting to kind of get more of that like kind of like choppy effect, you can go into iWish and actually pitch it down or you can turn your sort of arpeggiators uh, octave down. <laughs> Awesome, that's cool. It's a little bit regimented, so if you are wanting to go with a bit more of a kind of like random approach, you can use the Apache 5. It's got a random setting, which you can use. That's pretty cool as well. So how that works is um, out of all the sort of keys that you input, it's going to spit out uh, random of those at each of the sort of step intervals that you punch in there. That could be cool if you've got like a couple of sort of preset notes or octaves that you kind of know, okay, that one sounds good or that one sounds good. You can just sort of like set those notes and then uh, get the arpeggiator to like randomly trigger between those, uh, change the kind of like quantized setting to get like some variations and stuff from there. Cool, that's sounding good so far. So what I wanna do now is I wanna export uh, this out as an audio sample. Um, the reason why I don't use render when using this plugin is because uh, the it needs to take information from two channels. So rendering is generally, uh, it's kind of like a, on a per channel basis. Whereas if you export in the actual file project settings over here, you can select, uh, it's basically like whatever you've soloed uh, gets turned into an audio sample there. So when you're using iWish and or any plugin that re uh, requires a, another track to kind of work, then you're gonna have to use this export function as opposed to the render function. So there's various other settings in iWish which you can play with like the formant and all sorts of stuff like that. But just for the simplicity of this tutorial, um, I just bounced it out as is. Um, this is the audio file that we, we got. I'm not sure if it's the same with everyone, um, but for some reason when I use this plugin um, with this arpeggiator method, it always skips 1 16th forward. So I've got to like uh, skip it back. But I mean, it's not a train smash. I mean, you could just delay the actual channel or you could just move it back like in the audio sample, like exactly what I've done here. I want to show you guys a cool trick with LFO tool. You'll notice that a lot of the time when Asterix does this type of effect, there's some heavy panning tricks going on. And you could easily use the Cable Guys Pancake uh, like that I explained in a previous video. Or, I mean, we, we want to use LFO tool for some maybe some filtering and stuff that's going on. So we can maybe use some of the various layers that are in LFO tool to do a couple of the uh, modulations and stuff that are, we are wanting to apply to the signal. So first things first, I don't want any sort of volume attenuation happening. So we can just uh, default that and let's set this pan to 100%. So now this middle, uh, so now this graph would function basically as like an auto panner and we can do all sorts of like crazy effects. We can just hold shift and just draw in some patterns like that. So let's just play around with this while the audio is playing. <laughs> So 
So depending on how like quickly you want this kind of motion to be applied, um, you would change this rate over here. You can also set the snap up to 16 and create more steps, you know. Um, but like I said, just I'm, I'm trying to keep things simple here. The inspiration can flow um, from you guys like after, you know, after the fact. So here we can actually go ahead and create another layer of automation and we can apply this to the cutoff or something like that. So here let's use uh, like a band pass or something and let's see how this sounds. Cool, so you can go wild. I mean, you can apply, apply any filters there. I went with the FLG H6 Plus. Uh, I think Protoculture mentioned this in a uh, comment on one of my videos. It was actually an Asterix video as well, and it kind of adds this metallic sort of sound. And it's cool being able to apply, you know, Serums filters onto vocal sounds and stuff like that. Um, so LFO tool, I mean, Serum FX is, is obviously a, a nice way of doing that. Um, but sometimes it's a little bit bulky for just these kind of like simple kind of uh, sounds that you're wanting to do. And LFO tool has this nice kind of like modulation uh, panel in the middle to draw in all these like crazy patterns and stuff. So I'm going to leave it at that for the modulation and stuff. But like I said, you can go wild. You can apply modulation to all sorts of different stuff in the patch here. Um, you know, using all these different layers. Um, you know, you're not necessarily limited to the sort of timing and stuff that I've done here. Cool. So now once I've bounced out that kind of like sample, I mean, um, I've done a couple of tutorials on resampling and stuff, so you can throw that in a synth, you can do whatever you want. Um, but what I generally like to do is to just, you know, put a, a delay on this. And I've, I've kind of done the same technique of arrangement in a couple of videos, I think specifically the Aja tutorial. Um, but I like to throw a delay on here and that way makes it kind of easier to chop these up and spread them out because, um, the delay will kind of like fill in those gaps in between those in the those kind of like uh, sounds in the arrangement. I'll show you now. So you could either use it kind of like just as is full on with the delay and everything. Or you could break up that sample um, holding alt and then scissor tooling it. And you can kind of like span these out like I've explained in several tutorials, this is quite a sort of uh, overused trick of mine um, to create multiple variations on a single type of sound. Anyway, um, this is what it would sound like doing something like that. So here I actually want to create a variation, one that's slower for that kind of like drop section. So I just opened up LFO tool again, changed the rate, and now we can bounce that out again or uh, render it out again. So that's the sort of like wilder, more glitchy kind of way of doing it. Um, but I noticed in quite a few of Asterix tracks, he also uses a similar technique, but 
less of a kind of like tone to the actual like glitch effects more of a kind of like repeat more of a sort of like audible repeated sound i would say the easiest way to do that again is by using something like i wish but without using an arpeggiator i want to show you guys a cool little trick i've actually reloaded this audio sample here and i want to take away this like first like through part that he says through just because I, I think there's a like a little bit too much kind of like pitch information coming through there so we'll just kind of like go with like a caves of thought i hear a voice kind of thing caves of thought i hear a voice okay i'm gonna warp it a little bit here like i explained uh, earlier on hear a voice, caves of thought, I hear a voice, caves of thought, I hear a cool so here let's add uh, i wish again and then what we're going to want to do is let's add a MIDI track and let's just make sure this is sending to the iWish plugin. So here, uh, we're not going to use the arpeggiator like I explained before. What we can do is here in this MIDI insert section, we can add this step designer. I want to show you one of the reasons why I like to use the step designer for this kind of thing. Uh, kind of just increases the workflow if you're switching sort of like tempos of a sort of more simple rhythmic pattern. So let's just put in a bunch of, I, think, I believe it was like G sharp. So I'm just going to put in a bunch of G sharp notes. So this is essentially like a little sequencer that loads up in your MIDI inserts and that sends to whatever's either loaded in the channel. So if, if you've got like a plugin or something, you can, you know, quickly create sequences using Step Designer. Uh, or you can send it to like iWish to uh, resample uh, or re-trigger like we're doing in this video. So this is cool for various reasons. You can set like uh, varying velocities and stuff here. I'm not really going to go too in depth of this. I have got a, a tutorial coming up on it. Um, but the sort of main reason why I like to use this uh, step designer for this kind of uh, these kind of tricks is because you can quickly change the step size. So the step size obviously represents the size of each of these steps, and you can also change the length. So you can create like polyrhythmic patterns and stuff like that. But again, I'm not going to get too in depth with that. So here we can, for example, change this to one over eight. And I'm going to actually let the audio play while I change it, so you can hear like the differences that that happens there. Cool, so that's the first big step. So now let's head on over back to I Wish, and there's a little bit too much of a sort of like tune or, or, or like pitch kind of thing going on here. So we can turn this down to minus 12, and that's not gonna actually alter the pitch of the audio that's going in there as far as I know. It's going to change the speed of the retrigger. So the actual like kind of retrigger effect would become much more audible. We can go and uh, you know uh, set this MIDI modifiers down an octave and stuff like that, but we'd be fiddling around too much there. I like to sort of jump into the plugin and start playing around with these effects because you can actually get some pretty cool stuff while playing around with this formant and stuff like that. Although that's not really the sound we're going for. I'll kind of show you it just now. Anyway. <laughs> So it's pretty cool for, you know, your sort of like your sort of like atonal retrigger effects as well as those kind of like more synthy type of sounds that I was showing you guys earlier. So the bonus here is you can actually, you know, punch in a sequence here as well. 
and I like to sort of create like a more sort of like rhythmic pattern using these sort of re-triggers. So essentially what's happening now is every time this triggers, I'm not sure the exact timing, but it sounds like a one over 64. And then when you go down an octave, it'll re-trigger one over 32. So essentially you're getting a similar kind of effect to what I was showing in the Thorn, that glitch sequencer uh, tutorial. But this way you've got um, control to go all the way up into the kind of like chromatic range. So let's just randomly add in some like rhythmical stuff over here. And let's listen to what that sounds like. So you can get a multitude of different effects out of that and you know furthermore if you're not happy with what's happening you know in terms of like the sort of overall effect you can actually move the audio like backwards or forwards a 16th or an eighth and play around with with the placement of that because that's going to change the actual sort of like sample of audio that gets re-triggered if that makes sense so let's listen to a couple of variations of just moving the audio around. And then you can, you know, if you want to, you know, process it more, you can go ahead and apply LFO tool and do, you know, some of the uh, sort of like stepped modulation and stuff that I was explaining just now in the video. And you can get all sorts of crazy variations of this. So, yeah, definitely try out all of these different techniques and see what sort of uh, unique glitchy vocal choppy sounds you can come up with. So, yeah, anyway, this is what it sounds like with uh, the LFO tool with a couple of these modulations happening. Okay, so then with quite a bit of like chopping up and rearranging of all these kind of like clips that I've created, um, I used one of these sort of uh, more minimal parts to kind of like build it up into that part. And then I put some delays and stuff on a couple of the channels, various effects and stuff. But as you can see, it's like I'm only using very minimal parts of each of those because often there'll be stuff that might not fit the particular track that you're working on or something like that. Or you might just want a slight little hint of a kind of like re-triggered whisper or something like that. So with this type of thing, I don't often end up using an entire sequence unless you want it to sound like a sort of lead or synth line or something like that. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this is the kind of sound that um, like the result of, you know, the chopping and rearranging and effects and all sorts of stuff like that. So I'm going to play it solo and then I'm going to play it with the kick and bass. <laughs>
But yeah, it might be a long-winded process, but I find, you know, using a plugin like iWish is going to save you, you know, maybe even a multiple hours if you're doing uh, this type of uh, sort of like in-depth editing and stuff with a scissor tool. So yeah, I definitely suggest checking it out. It's a really, really awesome plugin. But like I said, you can do this with a scissor tool. It's probably just going to take you a heck of a lot longer. So yeah, that's about it. Quite a long one. <laughs> A big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to upload a couple of these uh, loops to my Patreon for my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link that's going to be somewhere on the screen right now. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.